Hmm. Okay, I think I am live. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, I want to see if I can switch my camera mid live. I don't know if I can. Oh, maybe I can't. Hmm. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, edit. Can we do edit? Okay, I guess we can. All right. Hey, everyone. <clears throat> Okay, so can everyone hear me okay? Perfect, cool. All right, hey everyone, welcome. I'm super excited to be here with you. Happy Sunday. Um, we're gonna do a lot of fun things. Hey, Julie, hey, Diva, hey, Sarah, hey, Shannon, hey, Midnight, hey, Chris, hey, Graciela. I am so excited y'all are here. Um, let me just see if I can change any of things and then we'll get started. Okay, so let me turn this off. All right, so um, I'm really excited to be here with you guys. Uh, we have a lot of fun things uh, I'm gonna look into today and we can explore together uh, and that I really wanna share with you some new things that I'm working on and playing with um, idea-wise in the realm of mysticism, metaphysics, self-actualization and self-inquiry. And um, yeah, and I'm also gonna teach some practical tarot things as well. So what I have on the docket for right now, and it may change because I'm gonna ask you guys to put in the chat, what you would like to learn. So while I'm explaining my pseudo plan for today, put in the chat what, what you would like to learn about tarot or mysticism or anything. Hey, David. Hey, Gloria. Hey, Julie. Hey, Anne-Marie. So good to see you here. I totally miss you, seeing you in class. Um, but I hope all is well. Um, oh, it's so good to see you all. I miss you, Julie. I miss all of you guys. Um, okay, so here's the plan for today loosely, but again, put in the chat what you'd like me to cover and I may be able to get to that as well, or I may, might be able to shuffle our plans, but I'm looking to, um, I'm going to teach you guys, I'm going to teach some beginner stuff, I'm going to teach some advanced stuff, and then I'm going to teach some really advanced stuff. Um, we're going to start with methods to read tarot without any sort of memorization, without any sort of occult knowledge or esoteric stuff. And then we will go into, um, then we will go into people that are studying. So if you've never read Tower before, if you've never read a book, if you've never watched any of my videos, I'm gonna teach you how you can read Tower without any of that. And then for the people that have been watching my videos and or taking my courses that are, um, more experienced in the esoteric side of things, like Kabbalah, astrology, and other correspondences and uh, things you can work. Uh, I'm going to teach uh, a little bit on on that level, just a little bit of fun things, and and I'm or rather I'm going to introduce an approach on that level, and then on the third level I'm going to teach is going to concern a sort of remix of that level. So, um, so right now what I'm do, uh, I'm in the middle of my advanced tower course. Uh, several of you, um, are in that and, uh, it's, it's been so delicious We're, we've been, it's been like an amazing group of people and we've just been exploring esoteric tarot, uh, Kabbalah astrology and how that paints a picture of ourselves and a holistic self-development and even mystical standpoint, but also in, uh, how we can use that in practical reading. And, um, and it's, it's led us to a lot of places and what, where that course is now, the advanced tower course, we're starting to see, and this is a good thing, we're starting to find the blind spots in the post golden dawn esoteric tarot system, which is really exciting because if we know anything about tarot, we know that it's constantly moving and developing and, uh, people are constantly contributing to it. And, um, and developing the system, you know, because it's a technology, right? And technology grows with a society and grows usually, hopefully, in a direct reflection of where that society is going. Uh, and that can be terrifying. Hashtag AI and, uh, <laughs> you know, the sci-fi nightmare, but it can also be really beautiful. Um, so so in, in, in the course together, we're starting to look at um, 
big questions like why we do what we do, why do we create these correspondences, and what, what are these esoteric orders doing, and the meaning of association, and all that good stuff. And, uh, and so in the third part of today's class, if we get to it, what I'm going to do is I'd like to turn all of that on its head and, um, and just kind of what, what happens when we let all of that go? What happens when we let all of the tradition, all the traditions go and the symbolism and the history and the, all of that good goodness? Um, and where does that leave us? Um, because it actually does some cool stuff. So, okay, cool. Let me just check chat. Hi, Yannicka. Hi, Silas. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Purple. I'm so excited y'all are here. Hi, Sue. I think I saw Sue here. Sue's my mom. <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, so yeah, put in the chat if there's anything specific you, you'd like to learn. And if, if any questions come up as I, I go through the material, let me know. Um, but otherwise, we will stay. Hi, Shuba. Namaste. Hey, Jackie's Crystal Moon. Um, but yeah, so let's jump into it. So again, the, the plan for today, we're going to start with Tarot Basics, a skill that you can learn right now uh, that you'll never have to learn any esoteric thing ever to read tarot. Then we'll go a little bit more into the esoterics and the and the associations. Hey, Giuseppe, hey, Juicy, I mean. Um, and then we'll go into the next level, which is letting go of all of that. And, uh, and then, um, oh, I did say I would give readings in the beginning. So before I start teaching, if there's anyone that is really feeling like you definitely need a reading, put it in the chat and we can do a quick reading to warm up. Oh, and when I say uh, ask a question for your reading, give me a, uh, don't, don't, uh, don't put a, you don't have to do a long explanation, but do a quick question like, what do I need to know about? How can I best do this? Or um, give, give, ask a question in a creative manner. Like if you have, you have a choice to make, what, what do I need to know about this choice? Or if I choose this, what will be the benefit? Or, uh, and this is, by the way, this is a teaching teachable moment too, because um, though I will read people on very clear cut, yes, no binary answers. I've done it before and I still do it. Uh, it's actually more beneficial to the questioner to ask a question that invites creativity, possibility and stuff. Because one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest illusions that is evident in reading for people is that we live in some sort of like binary labyrinth of this is going to happen or this is going to happen, right? So when people come and say, is so-and-so going to text me back or am I going to get this job? And it's like, though those are valid questions and I will, I can work with them on them with you. They're not bad questions. Um, sometimes when we, when we create a, a charge of a yes or no, it sets, it holds energy in place and it stops us from receiving all of the contribution that the universe is in that moment and also all the contribution that you are. So, um, so it's, yeah, but let me see, uh, we're looking at, uh, hi everyone. So, so you to take part. Yes. Uh, da, da, da. okay. Uh, Silas says reading on this new friend I made in the matrix. <laughs> okay. Silas, so let's, let's get into this. I invoke thee, Ia, oh, that thou send Haru, the great angel set upon the operations of the secret wisdom to lay invisible hands upon these consecrated cards of art, that thereby we may obtain knowledge of hidden things in your ineffable name. Amen. All right, cool. So, um, love this new friend you made in the matrix. Um, okay, so we're looking at the priestess card. So I'm getting a connection that a lot of things are not going to be vocalized or communicated, but maybe mutually understood. That said, um, like if if there is ambiguity. Um, be like, don't be afraid to ask for clarity on whatever situations come up with this friend. If it's a platonic friend or a romantic partner or whatever, like, don't be afraid to take the first move. And if the answer that you're getting is ambiguous or uncertain, then that's the answer. And you have and notice that that's the energy um, because like that sometimes people are like, you know, it's it's a vibe. And it might not be a vibe you're looking for. It might be a vibe that you're okay with. But I do see with this friend um, that there is um, that that there is there's 
a lot of things that are not determined for them or for you or for both of you. And I think in some way, both of you share in that, uh, in that trust of things being up in the air, but notice that if that's the case. And if you're cool with that, that's cool. But if you're not cool with that, then say, okay, I want to ground some of these things and, and make choices in that way. Um, Diva says, what do I need to know about a recent connection? Okay, a recent connection, Diva. Okay, we have the tower. So this recent connection might have, uh, I don't know if there's red flags to this person or you might have some red flags to the other person. Red flags are not objective things. They're more like, they're, they're subjective. So you or this other person may press each other's buttons in certain ways or may remind the other person of people uh, in the past of this life or another life. So just be aware of that. And uh, red flags are good. Getting your buttons pressed can be good because it shows you something to explore and work on. Uh, I'm not saying move forward with fear, but move forward with caution, be super self-aware and, and ask yourself often, is this a me thing or is this a them thing? Uh, any reaction you have uh, to this person, just notice like, is this my business? Is this, we all have our baggage, right? We're all, we're all traveling and um, we're all traveling through the matrix with loads and loads of terabytes of baggage from past lives and this life and whatever, but just notice that. And it, it allows you to bring the focus back into you. And it also allows them to be a blessing for that self-awareness. Um, what's, uh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Let's do, 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 do. Uh, the starry path. Me and my partner are uncertain whether we should move back to where we used to live or not. Okay, starry path. So let's check in with that. Let's see what energy is showing up there. Okay, so the Eight of Cups. So uh, there's definitely something. Okay, I'm going to say this in two levels. Watch what I do here because this is going to lead into what I'm going to teach today. Um, so something I'm doing with my with my students now and with, with my own practice is going to that next level of tarot reading, which is you can read for someone and you, you can show them the options, but the, the, the ultimate level is, and I, I think we can all agree. And if you can't agree, you know, maybe we can, we can discuss this, have a debate, but really, really, really there's, you're never actually, la this is easy to say hard in practice, but you're never really lacking anything. Like, like if you were to like sit with yourself right now, and notice that the awareness you have listening to me or whatever you're doing in this moment, that awareness is fully saturated in the same mystery, material awareness, consciousness being yourself that it has been when you were in preschool, that it has been when you had your first, I don't know, whatever, like um, as this morning, as tonight, it's the same awareness. And that awareness is full. Uh, it, or it's either, you can say it's either full or it's completely blank. There's many ways to describe it, but um, really there's no, nothing lacking. And what the tarot cards are going to show us is not that anything is lacking in our life or our, our world, but that there, we may prefer something. We may prefer a pattern or an organization of experience that we don't, we have not currently created for ourselves. So um I'm going to get into that later when we get to that third thing when we start uh, to do, when I teach the advanced part of today's class. But um, but when I say that there's something lacking, there's really nothing lacking. Okay, that said, right? That's like on the mountain peak of what's up, right? We like nothing's actually lacking. We are full. That said, you may feel like something is lacking. Okay, but again, it's not a lacking in yourself. It's a lacking of what you're going to choose to create in the art that is your world and your life. And this eight of cups is a moment of change. You know what I actually see with this Eight of Cups for you is, I don't know if it's moving back to where you used to live, but it may be moving. And I would be very curious. I would ask yourself, what, where, what is it that you're looking to reclaim or create in where you used to live that is not showing up in where you live now? And start from there, okay? Don't start from, um, uh, I would say, don't start from a place of safety. Because the thing was with this card, since you haven't moved yet or you haven't made actions to, to move back there, there might be a little bit of a resistance or an awareness that that's not exactly where you're meant to be. Um, and so, yeah, I like what I'm teaching my students and uh, I'm doing a mysticism for misfits course right now, which is so freaking fun. And we're talking a lot about manifestation and just, and I don't even, manifestation is a word, but creation, you know, choosing your world. 
You want to be salivating over where you are going. This is for everyone, by the way. You want to be completely salivating with where your targets and your goals are set up for yourself. Because uh, if you're not, then it's you're not going to move as quickly or as urgently or as um, intentionally in those directions, right? So, and it's a process to get there, but it's like you get to a point where more slowly, the percentage of your life that you're excited for starts to increase the more you're you're intentional with everything. Um, but, you know, be patient with that. Okay. Um, Marie Christine, what should I know about this long-term connection? Any official relationship in the works? Okay. Okay. Oh, this one wants to come out. The Wheel of Fortune. So the Wheel of Fortune, there's a lot of possibility. What I'm what I'm seeing, Marie Christine, is that there's a lot of possibility, but there are more than I'm not gonna say people, but I'm gonna say there are yeah, there are more than one people, one more than one person involved. I'm not saying this is like uh, a love triangle necessarily. It might be this person has family or other or certain responsibilities or promises they've made. And uh, being we have Jupiter, Jupiter rules Sagittarius, Sagittarius is long distance. So both of you have your responsibilities and it's a matter of, it's a matter of um, priority really. And uh, it's, you have to, I would say accept first, know what your priority is in, in, in the realm of love and connections and know what that is and know what that vision is for you. And then in a sense, you want to size up this person and see if they fit the bill. And, and, and in a relationship, you might want to say, okay, you know, usually it's good to be a, somewhat of a priority in the other person. If you are that priority for them and they're that priority for you, then let the magic happen. But if it feels like effort and, and, and relationships aren't just like that, you know, there is effort, but if it feels like effort from the beginning or it's been feeling like effort, be curious about that. Why is there effort or resistance or what other priorities are blocking that connection? And if, and if there are other priorities, accept that and recognize, okay, maybe it's not the right time. But with the Wheel of Fortune, I'm seeing an up and down, maybe even hot and cold, maybe, maybe even back and forth nature with this. Now, the Wheel of Fortune can also say that it's a very strong connection and it's very uh, something you can enjoy and value. But again, there's unpredictability, even though it's continuing. So I see the connection continue, but is it the relationship that you want? Is it the love that you want? I can't say for certain. Um, I'll do, I'm going to do two more and then we're going to get into some class stuff and then, uh, and then we'll... Okay, what should I know about this long? Okay, well, I did that one. May I have a reading for my upcoming trip I have to Vietnam? Thanks. Okay, totally, Minthu. Let's look at that. All right. So we're looking at the Ten of Wands. So delays, be open to delays, be open to certain things not working out. But um, let's see what else. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so um, be open to delays. I feel like any redirections that show up for you for this trip are going to put you in the right place at the right time to reclaim some of your own creativity, personal power, or passions that you might have put on the back burner. Also, something about this trip may connect you to financial opportunities and I see a lot of beauty too. I see a lot of like of, of uh, new confidence uh, either in yourself or just comfort in enjoying the pleasurable things in life. So pamper yourself, but expect ch uh, changes and, and be okay with them. Okay, last reading, and then we'll get into some stuff. Um, oh, thank you, Silas. Um, yeah, I like, I discovered, I discovered, um, I usually wear like the same like type of clothes for like five years, and then I'll discover a new type of clothes and wear those for like five years. And uh, um, okay, uh, let's see. Is my dog L. May going to settle down for me? She is part boxer mastiff. Settle down. Settle down in terms of like relax or like. Um, um, or like pass on or like settle down. I'm, I'm not sure what that means. I'm, I'm not always the best with words sometimes. Um, I'm going to come back to that one. Okay, May. Hi, Joe. Should I accept my ex? back after a long break on and off. Okay, so I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna put the cards for you and then I'll give you my soft rule on that. 
Princess, uh, Princess of Discs. So you're growing and you're on the path and Seven of Cups. Okay, so, and then the Four of Cups. So the cards are saying what I was actually gonna give you as my soft rule. I don't think anything super major has changed with this person. Um, you're on a journey and they're on a journey. And, but the Four of Cups and the Seven of Cups is saying the patterns have not really changed a whole lot, at least for them. And that's okay. They don't have to change. So I think you will find it's just more of the same thing, maybe a little bit better. And that's up to you. Um, my thing with like exes and stuff is we attract people based on where we're at. And if you attract someone in one chapter of your life and then go back, they come back to you or you go back to them in another chapter, it's not, I, I don't find it too common for it to be very different because they represent that part of you in the past, which is great, but you've grown a lot since then. So I always think it's good to, to create, manifest, attract a number of new, at least dates, if not partners, or like see, see what happens, see what shows up next for a bit before. And you know, the thing with that is if, they're, if you're meant to be together, you won't be able to stay away from each other. But, um, but if you're not meant to be together, then you will both continue to find reasons why. Okay. Um, let's look at uh, Luis. I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to get a little bit into the material for today, and then I'm going to come back. So uh, rem remind me I have Luis on the docket, and I have Julie Rinaldi on the docket. Okay and Louise. Okay, so I'm gonna teach some things now. Again, we're gonna go from super beginner to advanced to super advanced. And that's gonna be, I'm gonna teach one thing for each of those levels. And as always, we're going to get deliciously holographic and deliciously heretical. So get ready for that. Um, uh, cool. Let's get into this gig. So yeah, if you haven't met me, my name is Joe Monteleon. I'm a modern mystic and metaphysical misfit, and I'm building an army of tower readers to save the world. I have a huge giant curriculum that goes from beginner tower reader to advanced um, esoteric tarot to thoth deck to professional reader. And now we're even going into even higher places and it just keeps growing and the community is amazing. So that's what I do, and I'm very happy to be with you now to teach some stuff. So this first thing I'm going to teach you guys is for the uh, super intro. And if you are an experienced reader, I would say I would recommend paying attention to, because what I'm about to teach you right now is like a, a, a fundamental basic uh, technique that you can use in combination with anything else you've learned or things that I've taught you, and it's really cool. So yeah, so this is how it goes. Um, wait, what am I gonna actually teach? Uh, how to read the cards without, okay, how to read the cards without memorization. So, um, so the general idea is we wanna know the four elements for this method. And this method comes about through, um, through four most commonly asked questions. How do I get paid? How do I get laid? How do I stay unafraid? And how do I enjoy life's parade? So these are the four elements and how do I get paid is usually pentacles and the element of earth. How do I get laid is our relationships and, and marriage and family. That's uh, the suit of, suit of cups and the element of water. Um, how do I stay unafraid is um, the mental world, the element of air and the suit of swords. And how do I enjoy life's parade is the, is the element of fire and the suit of wands. And enjoying life's parade is your higher purpose, your passion, your creativity, all of that. Um, staying unafraid is your mental health, your identifications, your mind, uh, suit of swords. And then the suit of cups is how do we get laid, family, you know, friends, um, procreation, or creating community in that way, figuratively, or all that. And then, um, did I mention all of them? How do I get paid would be pentacles, work, uh, also physicality. So most of you guys probably know the elements. Um, it's kind of, it's becoming more and more like, I guess, colloquial, you know, 
as, as astrology inches closer to becoming the national religion of the United States, <laughs> um, the elements are just becoming more and more. Yeah, so there's your elements, right? We all know them. Uh, and so what the technique I'm going to teach you now is um, what I do in my tarot divination. Well, I teach this in my tarot divination course as well, but I also teach numerology and like different methodology and connecting patterns and stuff. But even before that, what you can just do, and this works for the minor arcana, is um, what you can do is you can know, so two steps for this, and it works for the minor arcana, and if we have time, we'll get to the major arcana. But what you're going to want to do is when you pull a minor arcana is you're going to notice the suit symbol and then recall the, what, that, what element that represents. So for example, um, I'm just going to pull the page of wands because um, he's peeking out. So uh, for the page of wands, what we're going to do is we're going to notice the suit symbol. And that suit symbol represents what element? It represents fire. And what does fire represent? It represents passion. It represents creativity. It represents your goals. It represents your higher purpose. It represents sometimes spirituality, sometimes sexuality, uh, your will, and all that good stuff. So we're going to Keep that in mind. And step two is noticing the relationship between that suit symbol and the rest of the scene. Okay. This works best for illustrated decks like the Rider Waite Smith, but it also can work with Thoth. And if we have time, I'll show you how that can work. So what we're going to do is take everything that the suit, that the wand and the element of fire represent and combine that with uh, the scene. So this is somebody that's holding a wand. Notice that the wand is taller than them. And it's almost like they're measuring up to it. So this we, we might say that this is, represents somebody who is trying to measure up to a certain creative endeavor or passion or ambition or work or professional goals or their purpose. And they're trying to be like, okay, I think I, I hope I can measure up to this big goal that I have, right? And that in itself is enough to be the door to get you in. So in your reading for yourself or for someone else. So you pull this card and you just sit with it and you, you, you swat, look at him, measure up to his higher goal and just riff on that and just say whatever else comes to your mind. And, and that might be it. The thing with uh, tarot knowledge is you only need a certain amount of knowledge to get you going. And then the rest is intuition. This is something I'm becoming more and more I'm seeing more and more with my students and um, it's something, you know, I used to be very technical and very old school and very well, you have to know the meanings of the cards and the traditions and read the books and da, 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 da. And, and I think all of that's very important and valuable, but in the very beginning, you got to use what's going to get you talking. Um, so yeah. Uh, ooh, page of wands sometimes means uh, LGBTQ to IA for me. Oh, I love that. I have vids of him on my channel. Very cool. Yeah. Page of wands is cool. Um, he's fun. So yeah, and that's that. And then you just hang with the page of wands for a bit. And everything else is like, is just more things you can add and use. If you know, like, um, um, you know, princess of the palace of the roses and da, 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 and the earth of air and the, the throne of the ace of wands, all of that good stuff, just more pedantic things you can pull in. So um, let's try another one. Oh, hey, Julie McD, so happy you're here. Um, let's see, Knight of Cups. So oh, I guess we're doing the court cards today, which is good because I know one of you asked for court cards today. So the Knight of Cups is, uh, so there's a lot of fun stuff we can do here. So uh, cups represents what? Cups represents water. Water is our connections, our relationships, our family, our romance, uh, our, in some ways, our desires, but uh, it with cups, it's more the desires that are seductive, whereas the wand's desires are more self-initiating or self-directed. These are more like we uh, desires that are um, not as inherent as the suit of wands, aka falling in love with someone or being attracted to someone or, you know, it's like it is provoked. Um, so the ace, uh, so the knight of cups here is somebody looks like a knight, you know, on a horse holding a cup and looking pretty confident, looking forward, and maybe like, let's see what else there. It looks almost like he is offering this cup to someone or bringing this cup to someone. And so what can we say about that? We can say, this is someone offering their emotions, offering their, um, offering a relationship. This could be a proposal. This could be 
offering um, a creative idea or proposing um, a collaboration, right? So, and then you can just keep riffing off of that. Does anyone have any questions on, on that method? Let's just do one, one more while we're here. Um, let's see. So let's, let's pull the four of pentacles here. So four of pentacles, first step one, notice the suit. We have pentacles. So we know we're talking about earth. We know we're talking about money. We're talking about the physical body health. We're talking about, um, stuff, wealth. Um, and what's, what is, how is that suit symbol interacting with the scene? Well, we have a character gripping a pentacle or a coin close to his heart. We have one at the top of his head and at his feet. So somebody is literally holding on to what? Their money, their wealth, their wellness, their health, right? And it, it seems like they are, they're very much holding on. They're not even in the city. They're outside of the city. So yeah, lots of, and then you just keep riffing off on that. I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm in the process of editing a video or two on this exact technique. So there may be in the future, like a whole YouTube course on just this technique, or I don't know, maybe it'll be like $5 or something on my website. I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll see. It, it, it's happening. And so if you're interested in that, I'll, I'll be making more, more, more content on that. But again, this technique is no esotericism, no history, no theory, just suit symbol. Well, there's the element suit symbol and scene. And that's over half the tower deck, as you can see. And then the majors are the rest, but we, I'm not going to go into the majors right now, maybe in another class. Okay. So now y'all can read tarot. Oh, well, almost all of it, like 56 of the cards and you're good. And the majors will cover in another class. So awesome. Okay. Now remember I had a level two teaching that I was going to give you guys and a level three. So the level two teaching, uh, I'll start about now and we're going to, let's say, so this is for people. So if you've taken my courses and if, oh, by the way, you know what? Um, I'm going to do this plug now and a little bit later. Um, so y'all know I have courses running throughout the year and uh, my, my current course is filled up with the advanced tarot and my last tarot divination course. So what I'm doing now is if you are a big, super beginner or, or you're intermediate tarot reader and you want to learn the cards, you want to like read and like really know how to read, like confidently get those messages in an ethical and helpful way. I'm taking applications for my tarot divination course in July. Okay. So I'm already taking applications for that one. Um, that is, it's like 70 plus videos, live training sessions, um, downloadable online textbooks, and most importantly, the coolest people you'll ever meet. Seriously. They're amazing. Uh, a lot of them are here tonight and they're freaking awesome. And we come together, we discuss material, we practice, um, and we just do the work, you know, do the work on ourselves, learn to help other people do the work, whatever that is, healing, divination. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's freaking awesome. But yeah, level one tower divination course, the whole curriculum is a one-stop shop, but level one, like is everything you need to read and read well. Uh, yes, it's on my website. So if you go to my website, tarotmysticismacademy.com, uh, on the homepage, there is two uh, sections. One is, the second one is for the tarot divination course in July. So that's for beginners or intermediate readers that want to grow and expand their tarot practice for whatever reason, for professionally, for personal reasons, for reading for others, for helping people, for just deeper self-knowledge, like it covers all of it. Um, then if you are, if you've been reading tower for a while and you want to go into the, into the esoteric material, into the hermetic Kabbalah, into the astrology, into, uh, other disciplines of mysticism, um, you may want to look at the thoughts tarot mastery course, which is coming up in April. Now that one, if you are, if you have not taken my tarot divination course and my advanced tarot course, you must apply to that one. If you have taken advanced tarot with me already, then you can, uh, you don't need an application for that one. Just contact me and we'll chat. But yeah, if you haven't taken advanced tarot, you absolutely need that for Thoth Tarot Mastery. And uh, that's going to start in April. Uh, advanced tarot is a huge course. It, it, it's just, it's, I, I love it. It's so much fun. It's actually too big. I'm learning right now. So I'm actually going to be 
editing it and, 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 and growing it, but making it more digestible. But it's huge. It's over 150 videos and it's just jam packed. But the Thoth Tarot Mastery course is also very big and that starts in April. So if you want to go into esoteric tarot, if you want to go in, uh, and start working with um, whether it's Aleister Crowley or the things that Aleister Crowley was messing with, um, I teach that in a very non-sectarian way. So uh, check that out. Um, but that one's a trip. And then if you really want a crazy trip, I, I'm doing Mysticism for Misfits right now. It's another program. I feel like I'm going to do it again because this one has just been so um, elucidating for me and for a lot of the students in terms of how we view ourselves in a contextual, in a, in a conventional way of what do I want for my life, but also it's it's getting juicy. We're getting into a more existential analysis of, of us, and uh, that's what I'm about. Okay, so yeah, so now we're going to shift on to some advanced tarot stuff. So if you're a beginner tarot, I would still like listen in because it's stuff you might choose to study one day, but this is especially for those who have studied things like anything from astrology to Kabbalah, or if you num numerology, what we're going to be looking at in the next few minutes or next 10 minutes or next three hours. I don't know. I can't tell the future <laughs> unless you book me. Um, what we're going to be looking at in the next whatever is how we can use the correspondences in the tarot for manifestation, but more a creative approach to reading for ourselves and reading for others. So this, this um, I was really inspired the other day. I was reading for uh, one of my um, amazing students, Stacy, and we were just looking at, there's the divination, right? There is, okay, this is what the cards are saying, but that next level, and if you're, you're a professional reader, definitely pay attention, or if you wanna be a professional reader, definitely pay attention. The next level is getting your questioner to the place where you they know that they can choose, okay? This is big. Um, so I, I can say this because I'm from New Jersey, but I, I grew up in New Jersey and there were these psychics on the boardwalk and some of them were really cool, but some of them were just intimidating. And you know, everyone has a story of like this dark, unapproachable psychic that's like telling you your future and to like, this is how it's gonna be. And it's like, ugh, it's so like, it's 2023, okay? We have like quantum AI computers right now. Like we, we've, we've come a long way. We don't have to be telling people, oh, this is what's gonna happen. You don't really have a choice. And like, you know, like talking about death and whatever, it's like, let's move on. Okay, so how do we move on? What does that look like? Um, um, it's, it's, a really cool, it's a really cool place where, again, this comes with the correspondences. So Let's look at an example. Let me actually read somebody. And you might even notice that that's what I did in the earlier readings of this video. I, I, I continued to ask people, I would almost give a little bit of homework. I would say, look at this, think about this, explore this, because these are the energies. Choose that you want that energy or that you don't want that energy. So uh, if you're re watching this from the recording, you can go back and see how I did that. But, um, but let me actually go to a reading. Let's, we can do an example. So um, I think I, Julie Rin, Rinaldi was on the queue and also Luis was on the queue. So which, which, whichever of you you want me to read for, just put it in the chat. Uh, PJ says, you mean it's not normal for people to cry when you read their cards? Uh, people can cry. No, it's totally fine. Um, crying, well, there's two, there's usually two types of crying. Um, people will cry when they are telling themselves a story or they will cry when they're releasing something. So a cool, so one, one thing you can do with yourself or your clients or whatever is you can ask like, oh, what's, what is, um, it's, well, sometimes it's a weird question, but you can ask like, oh, what's, um, what's, you know, where are the tears coming from? And just notice their reaction. Sometimes they might go into a very specific story and that's an awareness to have for them. Or they might say, oh, I'm not sure. And if they don't know, then it's just a release. Um, but yeah, crying's allowed. Of course, this is the, this is the work. Um, Julie says, I've been crying for release all the time as of late. Very profound. Great, that's amazing. Yeah, just let it out. I love that. I was joking about the boardwalk readers, but thank you for the thoughtful answer. Oh, the boardwalk readers, yeah, I, they're, they're very interesting. Um, okay, uh, let's see. So 
let's say I'm just going to do a, do an example and not like give make a specific reader. But so so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a card and we're going to like give a practice divination and then we're going to use the correspondences to offer the the imaginary client something to work with or explore. So actually I'm going to use the so we're going to, woo. so the two of wands. So two of wands is a very like decisive card and it's a very, it's a high energy card and it's usually one of influence and um, assertion and maybe even aggression, especially in the areas of personal goals, volition and um, ma major, either enterprises or business or um, or purpose, okay? So you can tell someone, okay, I'm seeing this very assertive energy and I'm seeing you very headstrong, moving in a direction and making bold choices that will support you. Okay, so that's a cool divination. But that will give someone, someone to that someone can say, yes, you're right, or no, that's not correct, right? And I'm sure if, whoever you're reading for, they'll probably say yes. Um, if you're if if you're connected and you're locked in, um, but then what we can do from here is we can analyze the correspondences of the two of wands, and help the person best um, navigate this energy or use or integrate this energy. So, for example, you you can start with Aries. So the two of wands is the first deacon of Aries, and the thing about astrology, and this may be heretical to some people, but the truth is, we are all of the signs. We are all of space. We are the we are the sky. The sky isn't just we, we are the universe, right? And uh, it's we all have an Aries in us somewhere, even if you don't have any planets in Aries or whatever. Like, it's part of being human. Um, so you can, you can talk about those Aries, Aries qualities and invite your client or yourself to, um, explore and partake and even indulge in the energy of Aries. Aries is that energy of the first sign. It's the first sign, first sign on the scene. It's cardinal fire. So there is a sense of, um, adventure and bravery and courage and initiation, and even in some ways leadership, and fearlessness, and all of all of that Aries Ram energy. And so you could have someone sit with that and say, okay, what, where is that in you? Or you can even ask your client, um, how have you exhibited that in the past? How did that work out? And, um, and you might actually have a client, let's say you have a client that you pulled this two of wands, and they're saying, oh, that's not me. I'm not, I'm, I'm not very brave. I'm, I'm not really feeling like myself lately. Then you can coach them on invoking kind of literally the, the Aries energy and ask them, okay, well, what was the most bravest, what was the bravest thing you've done? What did that feel like? Um, and then help them see the Aries pattern that already is in their life. And the idea is all the signs have exhibited themselves in your life at one time or another. So yes, Julie, I love an Aries. Aries are the best. Um, and, and that, and then you can go into the next stage, which would be, um, you might use the planet, the ruling planet of Aries, but also the ruling planet of this deacon of Aries, the two of wands, the first deacon is Mars. Now this is where things get interesting. Mars is being the lesser malefic is not always a happy-go-lucky planet, right? Mars is um, not always very uh, easy to handle. So you can bring in Mars and start talking about Mars, and but also Mars is in their life as well, because Mars as a planet influences all of us. We all have Mars. Mars is our adrenaline. It's our will to live. It's our sexuality. It's uh, attention. It's um, it's that which destroys in order to create, especially in this deacon. So you can start talking about Mars, and this is this is really this next level because you wouldn't say this to all of your clients and and everyone, but it's um, but it's important. You can ask them to re this is very subtle what I'm about to say, and please don't misinterpret this. Okay, I'm going to trust you guys, so don't misinterpret this. But you can ask somebody to recognize the destroyer within them. Okay, not the destroyer of human lives or anything, but the capacity to destroy, the capacity to um, 
to to that and it's it's almost because we have we have to we have a capacity to destroy and we need that because that's how we create whenever you create something you're destroying something else right uh, I, I'm thinking right now of like, I, I'm, I'm editing videos a lot of the time. And when I'm editing videos, what I'm just doing is I am destroying raw footage to edit an edited, hopefully a pretty video that y'all like on YouTube, right? So rec so you can coach them into recognizing that and, and understanding that that is a capacity because sometimes people pretend they don't have that. Um, and the destroying part of us that can be, by the way, I know I was talking to a couple of you today about relationships and um, possibilities and uncertainties. When I said to you guys earlier in the video, choose if that's an energy that you want. And if it's not an energy that you want, choose something else. When you choose something else, you are destroying the original energy to, an, to a degree, sometimes, hopefully, maybe not all the time. But, but yeah, so I, I use those words destroy and, and uncreate. So, um, so there's that. Um, yeah, what else can you do? You can pull in the, cor the, the, the corresponding tarot cards for those two um, uh, symbols. So we have Mars being the tower and then we have Aries being the emperor. So this is somebody who you can help coach, get them into their inner emperor, into their inner sovereign, into their rulership, into their um, boundary setting, into their um, confidence, right? And then with Mars, you can help coach them into being okay with change, Mars being the tower, being okay with letting go, being okay with uh, aspects of destruction, right? But again, this is a high level of reading. This is not symptom work necessarily. This is the next level. So this is not, you know, if you have somebody in front of you that sometimes people just need to hear a positive thing, which is cool. But, um, but this is when we're going into what they are as a human being and helping them recognize their inner faculties of inner destroyer, inner creator, their inner, their inner tower, their inner emperor, all of that good stuff. Okay. Um, cool. So that's, and, and, and the correspondences come in to help nuance that process. Um, and the cool thing about this and I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not like, don't, I'm not knocking intuition. I'm not knocking the metaphysics of the tarot reading process, but I am inviting you to look at it in a, in a way that doesn't have to be metaphysical. That doesn't have to be necessarily intuitive or energetic, especially for a lot of you guys, which I know are very sensitive. I know some of you guys I work with, you're professional readers, you're reading all the time, or, and it can be very exhausting. You don't always have to give your client everything or feel everything or like um, use your highest intuitive abilities. Sometimes it's just a matter of talking about symbols and getting your client to a place of recognizing what those symbols represent within them. And that you can just do with your mind. It's, it's just another tool. It's another um, way of working. So, so yeah. And, uh, and they will be better for it when you do that. Not all clients use your intuition, but some clients um, can go that far. So, so yeah, so that's my level two teaching of using correspondences. And, uh, and again, these, this, I just use the astrology. I didn't even go into the Kabbalah. I didn't go into the angel names. I didn't go into whatever else you might add to your tower practice and all of that just came from one card. Right. So, so yeah. And, and one more thing, if you wanted to, and I recommend you do, and, and you guys probably do this naturally already, but I, I would imagine you do, but you can, what I just did with the two of wands, you can do for yourself with every card, every single card. And just, and that might be a, that one might even say that's a contemplative version of a, of a whole magical, um, what is it? Um, curriculum, not curriculum. Um, I don't know. Like a like a like a whole esoteric orders curriculum from going from Malkuth to Keter, going from you know normal state to enlightened is essentially you're kind of doing that. You're invoking forces and recognizing yourself in the universe and in the universe and yourself, and you just keep doing that deeper and deeper until you recognize yourself as everything. So that's a I don't know. You could I don't know. You you could literally get enlightened with. Uh, this type of type of stuff. Okay, so there's that. Um, I want to take a short break.
break. I'm going to give one reading or two readings before I go into the next thing I want to teach, which is the next thing I'm going to teach is the level after that. So, so far what we had was I taught how to read tarot without knowing any, any, without memorizing any books, without memorizing any disciplines. You're just using the four elements. So you got that. Now you know how to start incorporating the, the many correspondences, the advanced material into a tarot coaching practice for yourself or for someone else. And the next level is like the, the next level of all of this is going to be really freaking cool. It's going to be my favorite thing I teach at this moment in my life. And it's going to turn everything on its head. And uh, But before I do that, I want to ask if there's anyone I can read for. We'll take like a quick little tower reading break. And I'm going to use the techniques I just taught you in, the, in these readings. And then we're going to turn everything upside down. Okay, um, <clears throat> so guiding people to their own authority is an amazing process when using the cards. Uh, yes, very much that as a tool. Your amount of knowledge on various subjects is very impressive. Thank you so much, Miss Moonlight. Two of Swords for a love reading last night. I told her to be sure she knew what she wanted to attract to her. Great, yes, totally. Miss Muna, isn't Joe amazing? Oh, he blows my mind. Oh, thank you so much, Julie. Uh, Julie Ronaldo, hello. I just threw down some Lenormand for you, Joe, and I got the ship, the house, and the whip. Ooh, okay, cool. I love, I love, uh, I love a kink moment. Um, I definitely found my tarot teacher. I, oh, Yvette, I will, looking for you to take your courses, you should like bells into my ear. Oh, thank you. You sound like bells into my ear. Sorry, I can't read sometimes. Oh, thank you so much. It's so sweet. Yes, definitely. Um, reach out to me. And, uh, and if you want to go into the Thoth Tarot Mastery course, there's some spots for that. Um, not, not as many as the other one, but there are some spots for that. So if you want to go like into level three, let me know. We can chat about that. But there are definitely spots open for the July Tarot Divination course, uh, which will be really cool. Uh, Austin, yes. If you have, let me know your question. Miss Lenormand's great. Yeah. Um, would love Joe's courses. They have changed my life. Oh, thank you so much, Julie. Um, you know, Julie, you and the other students have changed my life so much. It's been the coolest journey getting to find other mystical misfits out there to really go far with this stuff. And by the way, like, I don't know, I, you know, I'm just going to say it like the courses that the, the, the work that I do with TMA and the student body that's at TMA, it's a very high level of reading tarot. And, and we go from like intro, like reading to like really deep mystical philosophy to even beyond now. And it's freaking amazing that I get to meet people that want, that are interested in that and that are doing that because it's it's not a common thing. Um, yeah, I'm really, I really, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I really wanna take tarot from something that people look at superstitiously and like they look at it as like spirituality as like this object to get into and to like, and it is that to a degree, like you, you have this thing that you, ex, that you use, which is great. But then the next level to that is it brings it back to you. Like I don't, it's very easy to get into tarot and think that it's something outside of you. And it, and it can be comforting in that way, uh, in, in the same way that technology is. But ultimately it's like, just to use a weird like metaphor, like social media, it can be very dark and addicting and very beautiful and bring people together. But social media is in no way anything outside of you because it's it's the it's it express it expresses you. It the algorithm feeds you what it, it knows your psychology, right? As dark as that is, it's you. Like so, when people say like, "Oh, social media is the worst thing ever," it's like, well, it's expressing what people are and it's expressing what people want. So I don't know what to tell you. Like, and the tarot does that too. So I want people to to know and understand that the tarot as cool as it is, and I really, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to knock the seductive nature of tarot because it can be so cool and so seductive, right? But it brings you, it can only bring you back to yourself. So, and that, and that can entail the, that self-development, but also going into realms of mysticism, which is what I love. Okay. Um, Okay, so Julie, let's give a reading for Julie. So I'm going to give a reading for Julie, and then we'll go into that that last uh, uh, technique that is going to turn everything inside out. It's not really a technique, but it's just a thing. Okay, so 
All right, so Julie, we're looking at the five of discs. So five of discs could be a strain, a race against time, or it can be a feeling of um, financial or physical limitation, um, or it can be stress about somebody else's financial or, or physical limitation. And um, yeah, and, and, and be curious about whatever that resistance is. Um, and uh, whether that's, I don't know, it could be resist like, yeah, look for, look for limitation and be curious about it. And I would ask the question, what is the benefit to that limitation? Now, what we can do, I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you guys the two techniques I taught in earlier today. I taught the um, how to retire without memorization and also using correspondences. So for this card, I might tell Julie, okay, um, we're looking at these five circular discs and we know that they're discs. So we know they have to do with earth. What does earth have to do with? Earth is um, the material world, the body, health, wellness, um, money. And we're noticing that they are in this upside down. Well, see, now I don't want to go into the esoterics here, but even looking at the colors, we're looking at mostly dark colors with a little bit of orange in the background, but even, even the colors are mostly dark. So even without knowing anything about the Thoth deck, without knowing anything about the numerology and the Kabbalah, we can say, okay, this could be a situation that is a little bit dark in terms of uh, the financial area or the or physical. It could be even maybe even health or you're feeling something or you're having a dark perspective on a health thing. Again, it's a perspective. Not I'm not saying like, oh, bad health is on the way. I'm saying there might be a negative perspective or reaction or, or something. Um, and, uh, and you might also say, again, I'm doing no esoterics here. I might say, so there's this darkness, right? And behind it, there's this orange light. So then I might say that in front of you, things seem dark around, oh, Julie says I need to get a knee replacement. There we go. So, um, so, th so there's darkness in front of you, but behind you, there's light. So behind whatever is blocking your view, there's something to look forward, look forward to. Do you see? Do you all see how um, I did that without knowing anything but the elements? Um, now I might bump it up a level, and I might start doing the the correspondences that I taught uh, in this class. So I might say, okay, what do we have here? We have Taurus. We have the first deacon of Taurus, which is ruled by Mercury, and we have Gabora in the world of Asaya. So what I'm going to say is Taurus is an energy of stability maintenance, um, and in a, in a sense of stubbornness, but also stillness. So I'm going to ask Julie, Julie, how can you use the stillness and uh, you, you might, uh, Taurus is fixed earth. Now, Julie said that she is getting a knee replacement. Uh, she needs a knee replacement. So there might not be a whole lot of moving and grooving until that happens potentially. So if that is the case, I might ask Julie, okay, Julie, what, how can you best use this stillness in your life right now? And notice how that's, we can look at that stillness and say, oh, like it's a limitation, or we can look at that stillness in the light of Taurus and say, oh, it's actually, it could be a sense of peace. Could be um, maybe you are catching up with um, a hobby um, or, a, an endeavor that just requires you to stay home and relax and be stationary for a bit, or maybe a meditative practice. All of these things connect with Taurus. Um, and then you can go into Mercury and you can talk about Mercury can be technology, can be the internet. So you might say with Taurus and Mercury, you can say you can invoke the stillness of Taurus to help navigate the something online. Maybe there's an online project coming up for you or something you create online. And then, yes, yeah, severity, you can bring in the number five. What is five? Five is Gabora. Gabora on the tree of life is severity. And so severity is the, the severity of the situation and the challenges of the situation that help. What do they help you do? Redirect you into something you're meant to be doing. How do they do that? Through the path of justice, because justice is the path that leads from Gabora and severity to Tiferet and beauty, number six. So that six, that success you're looking for, that light behind this darkness is happening because of the five. So um, just, just more tools you guys can use. Um, hey, Elizabeth. Um, 
Yvette says, I came to understand Tara when I finished a 10 year cycle and I saw my story through the 22 M major arcana. Now it's my desire to dive, to study it in a very deeper way. Yes, yeah, so totally, yeah. The tarot does not stop at divination. It definitely doesn't stop at fortune telling. And it doesn't even stop in coaching and self-development, right? Like what I'm doing now, like there, there's a lot of question and consideration, but what I'm gonna teach you next is even crazier. Um, okay. So yeah, totally, Julie, you can do a lot of classes, you can meditate, and, and all of that is in the tarot, right? And it's, it's, the symbols are expressing this balance of activity and inactivity. The tarot is a constant dance between extremes, between coming and going. And that's going to lead me to my next thing. So what I'm about to teach you is super heretical, super holographic. And what, and what I teach you here may risk me running my entire school into the ground because it's going to get very extreme. But um, so pay attention to this. So this is if, if you, if you've been studying a lot of correspondences and really enjoying the depth that is tarot or esoteric tarot for self-development, if it's a tool, the next layer is is when the tarot starts to implode and become you and you become the tarot. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna quote a really cool thing in a second. So how's, how do we want to do this? Um, okay, so again, now you guys have the two techniques to use, a beginner technique and an advanced technique. What I'm gonna teach you now is a approach or philosophy that is not necessarily a shiny technique to use, but is a philosophy to employ for something even deeper. And the, 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 the main idea is that, how do we want to talk about this? So as I've been saying, you are, like I said earlier, the tarot is not just a tool to be used by you as something separate from it. When you're using tarot and, and when you're using tarot, the tarot is not separate from you. It is literally like, I mean, a materialist scientist would agree that the tarot is not, your experience of the tarot is all in your mind. It's all in you, literally. When you look at the tarot, it's not the tarot, it's your experience of it. And that's true for everything. And uh, I'm going to get very subjectivist and idealist with you in a couple moments, but even a materialist scientist would agree with this. So... When you recognize that, that every experience you ever had of tarot, and anything for that matter, but we're focusing on tarot, has been um, your own personal experience, your own use of symbol, your own memory, your own projection, your own self-inquiry, it's been in you, okay, right? And this is why people, it's not really a great, idea. like if you're learning tarot right now and you give yourself a reading, it's not always the best idea to go to the books and try to find the meaning because the tarot is speaking to you, not like to somebody else's knowledge of tarot. When you use tarot, it's a subjective self-inquiry or, or you're assisting in the self-inquiry of somebody else. But um, it's not like when you go to the books, it becomes more superstitious. The tarot talks to you. So it's going to talk to whatever knowledge you have about the symbols and the meanings of the cards, because that's what it is. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to uh, destroy the tree of life. Okay. So if you, so for, for let me just get an image of this. <laughs> So for anyone that doesn't know, and if you're if you followed me for any amount of time, you know I'm a sucker for that tree of life. Um, so the tree of life is is uh, is a template of the universe. It's a template of you. It's an exp it's a map of everything that you are, which is a creative process. You are yourself a creative process, in the same way that the universe is a creative process. In the same way that everything's a creative process. It's one continuous creative process. It's all jazz, and. Um, and, and the Tree of Life expresses that and, and gives us a template for the tarot. And the, the tarot itself is like, is like an illustration of the Tree of Life in, in one tradition. Not all the traditions, but. And so what we can do. So my question here is the Tree of Life represents a creative process. And the, the moment the Tree of Life starts, the way it is, is above here we have source. We have the beginning of a creative process. You might say God, the source, the absolute, pure consciousness, 
all of that. And then down here, I'm just doing a quick review. Down here, we have the result of that creative process, which is this present moment, the physical world, your physical body, um, all your stuff, your physical experience. Um, and then through these 10 nodes, these 10 sephirot, these sapphires, these enumerations, uh, each show us a stage in that creative process, okay? So we're going from number one to number 10. And uh, to the, the best way I like to describe this is very like ancient mystics having glimpses of eternity, of like the absolute, of ultimate truth. And then from those glimpses of ultimate truth, they come back to this reality and they say to themselves, oh shit, how am I going to express this? And so what they do is they create maps to help people get from here to here. Now, uh, I'm going to heretically say that here, well, this is not heretical, this is just Kabbalah. This is not separate from this. This is in this. So our present moment, our physical experience of our bodies and of our bodies and even our minds are in the absolute, okay? Are in ultimate true nature, ultimate source, ultimate God, all of that stuff. And uh, again, this is heretical and this, this type of stuff is not for everyone. So, you know, if it's not your thing, just maybe it'll be your thing one day in the future, maybe not. So, okay. So my question or my curiosity or what, what I am looking to do is what happens when we do get up here and what happens when we do transcend all of this? Because all of this is essentially the pattern of coming and going, the pattern of um, opposites. And those opposites exist in these three pillars. So we have a pillar of neutrality, we have a pillar of mercy, and we have a pillar of severity. The pillar of mercy has traditionally been associated with masculine energy, and the pillar of severity has traditionally been associated with feminine energy. Uh, colloquially, I say force and form. So we have force, form and that dance between force and form. And it is that dance, that duality between force and form that creates our experiences through this whole tree of life. And again, if you're watching this and you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, you're going to want to take my advanced tower course. It explains everything in a lot of detail in over 150 videos. It's very, very um, comprehensive and very thorough and it, it goes very far in all of that. But, um, but I also have other stuff on my YouTube channel on the tree of life and how you can use it for tarot and stuff. Um, so now the tree of life is great. Y'all know I'm a sucker for the tree of life, but the tree of life in a, in a way is a, almost, this is where I'm gonna get heretical, is almost a trap because we're climbing this tree of life and when we climb the tree of life, something very interesting happens. We begin to identify with these stages and aspects of ourselves, because it's all aspects of a creative process, it's all stages in a creative process, and we begin to forget that all of it exists in here. And from the perspective of the top, of Keter, of the first Sephira, uh, Sephira none of this even exists, okay? This is a very, really subtle point uh, to make. Um, so, in a way, the tree of life, it, just like a map, like when you use a map, you know that the map is not the territory, right? The map is, the only way for the map to be, like Korzybski or whoever wrote about that, the only way for the map to be the territory is for the map to be literally as big as the territory. And if it's as big as the territory, fully in three dimensions or multiple dimensions or whatever, then it's not gonna be a map anymore. So, um, so again, this is just a map. And eventually, like all the Buddhists have said, we, we thro throw out the raft when we get across the river, right? Or we throw out the boat or whatever. We, um, this is just the vehicle. And um, it, it, there, there's this beautiful moment where it, all, where, where it all disappears. And the way I want to explain this to you is not even from a Kabbalistic source. So I'm gonna get very heretical now. I'm going to quote, uh, y'all know, some of you know, I've been on this Advaita Vedanta kick lately. It's like so just, the, the Upanishads are just like amazing. I'm going to quote the Katha Upanishad in a way to explain what this tree of life is doing. So totally different tradition, totally different part of the world about um, 
probably a thousand or 1500 years earlier, we have people writing about a tree and it might not be the same tree, but I want you to consider what, what I'm about to read to you uh, in relationship to the tree of life, okay? So, so what I'm reading from is um, Ed Upanishads translated by Swami Gambirananda. And I'm reading the Katha Upanishad, the last section. So part two, chapter three, verse one. I'm going to read the verse one, and then I'm going to read uh, Shankara's commentary on it. And it's so beautiful. So it goes like this. Um, consider the tree while I read this. So the Upanishad says, this is the beginningless people tree that has its roots above and branches down. That which is its root is pure. That is Brahman and that is called immortal. On that are fixed all the worlds. None transcends that. This verily is that. Okay, right? So on this source, on this root, which is Keter, and in tarot, Keter is connected with the aces. And what are the aces? Aces are known as the roots of the powers of their element. This is the root, and on these roots, all else exists. Now, there's actually two. There's, there's the one and there's the zero. The one is what we might consider to be some form of God, deity. It's Saguna Brahman. Sagu, Saguna Brahman is, like a, is, is the ultimate, but with qualities that we can describe. And then above that, the, the Kabbalistic Ein Sof could be compared to what in Advaita Vedanta would be Nirguna Brahman which is Brahman, the source, the absolute, without qualities, right? Because to give it qualities is to define it, and it's indefinable. It's ineffable. It is, uh, it is without second, so there's no way you can describe it. Very, very important point that gets under, underestimated in a lot of that, this stuff. Even, even in Kabbalah, it's Ein Sof. It's, it's absolute nothingness, the concealed of the concealed, all of that. Okay, so now I'm going to read Shankar's co commentary on that and think of the tree. This is, this is where it gets so fun. So Shankara says, that which has its roots above, the root that is the state of supreme Vishnu, this tree of the world comprising everything from the unmanifested to the immovables has its root above. It's called, I, I'm the worst at um, pronunciation. It's called the tree because of the root meaning of being felled. Okay, we're gonna cut down the tree, right? So <laughs> we're gonna cut down all of the associations and the correspondences and everything that I just taught in the class, we're cutting it down. It consists of many evils such as birth, old age, death, sorrow. It changes itself every moment inasmuch as no sooner is it seen than its nature is destroyed like magic, water in a mirage, a city in the sky. So we're looking at the, the evil, so to speak, are the coming and going things in the tree of life. And in that sense, it's like, it, it has a less absolute truth. So the tree of life with its polarity, with its dance between force and form, masculine and feminine, life and death, coming and going, that all of those have conventional truth that you can experience and we can say, yeah, there's a relative truth. Yes, I am Joe and I'm speaking into this camera and y'all are here listening or maybe not listening and there's this YouTube and all that, but all of that's conventional tr truth. And all of that completely disappears when we recognize the awareness that all of that comes from. The balance of coming and going, the balance of um, speaker and listener, the balance of all these things dissolve in that ineffable space or fullness or ultimate saturation or emptiness or no thingness, which is the Ein Sof or the Nirguna Brahma or consciousness, just pure consciousness. Um, and the way that you can experience or, or uh, explore that within yourself is, is ask yourself, what is the one thing that has been consistent all of your life through which everything else has been experienced, right? So um, just keep asking that question. What is that one thing that everything is experienced within? Um, anyway, so, so yeah. Uh, so let's keep going. So then he says... <clears throat> Oh, this is what he gets. He's so cool. So then Shankara says, it grows from out of the seed of ignorance, desire, action, and the unmanifested. 
It has for it to sprout Hiranyagarbha, the inferior Brahman comprising the two powers of knowledge and action. It has for its trunk the diverse subtle bodies of all creatures. He's literally like describing the tree of life. Its vigor of growth results from the sprinkling of the water of desire. Think about desire when you think about hokma and will and that, that moment of the fool going from catcher to hokma, uh, or even, even the magus, or, or et cetera. It has for its tender sprouts the objects of the senses of knowledge. Right? Now we're getting into, um, into Yasod and Malkut. Its leaves are the Vedas, the Smritis, uh, the, the, I, I, my pronunciation is the worst, logic, learning, and instruction. Its lovely flowers are the many deeds such, such as sacrifice, charity, austerity, etc. Its various tastes are the experience of happiness and sorrow. Its innumerable fruits are the means of subsistence of beings. It has its secondary roots well developed. And he continues to go and explain this beautiful tree that is also... It's, it's all polarity, right? It's all coming and going. And then he says, ready for this one? Um, he says, the, let me go to the second verse here. Because the second verse just puts the cherry on top. So consider everything I, that and compare it to the tree of life, which is which the tarot expresses, right? The tarot is an expression of a creative process that happens through duality, that happens through coming and, coming and going, that happens through the dance between me and you, subject and object, this and that, now and, and then, um, all of those dualities, that's what, because you can't, you need the duality, right? You need the, the, the duality which creates the polarity that creates the design, okay? You need the contrast. Now, another thing, if you don't know, is that the tree of life has been described as like a lightning bolt. So there's a lightning flash that happens. I don't know if I have an image of it. Maybe I do. Let me see. So the tree of life has been described as this lightning flash that goes from Keter and then zigzags down all the way to Malkuth. And this lightning flash, this lightning flash of God, source, the absolute, is is hitting the extremes, and it is through hitting those extremes, this duality, this uh, difference is how the universe is created. It, even in this moment, how do you know that you're looking at like your device right now? You're, you're watching me, you're watching this YouTube live, and you only know that your device is different from everything else because you have a history, you have a definition, you have a name, form, and function for that device, which is different from everything around your device. And it allows you to literally carve out your experiences and make your own reality, right? Okay. Um, and, uh, and so consider the lightning flash when, he, when verse two of the Upanishad says, all this universe that there is emerges and moves because there is the supreme Brahman, which is a great terror, like an uplifted thunderbolt. Those who know this become immortal. So that, there it is, folks. You heard it here. Um, <laughs> I just think that's so cool. Now, am I drawing connections between cultures where there absolutely are none? Possibly. But am I drawing connections that express something that cannot be expressed by any ideas or any books everywhere? Totally. Um, so, so yeah, so there's a lightning bolt. And, and uh, described as, I mean, this Upanishad is not the first or, you know, um, sacred text to describe the absolute is terrifying, right? There's, they all, they, it's all intense, right? But yeah, so I thought that was really cool. So um, what, did that, what the hell does it have to do with anything and tarot? Um, well, it has to do with everything. Because when you, everything I just said about the, the duality coming out of the nothingness, it's, Shankara says that the, the tr this tree that, that he's commenting on in the Upanishad comes out of, in ignorance. And, and what he puts forth is the idea that when we don't know we are this absolute consciousness, this oneness, there is ignorance. And when there is ignorance, we pretend we are lacking something. Remember in the beginning of the video, I shared with you that you're never lacking anything except in a, in a relative conventional sense. Like you may experience, you might have the idea that you're lacking something, but you're not really. So what Shankara says is that, that the ignorance of your fullness, not knowing your absolute fullness and completeness, that creates this 
uh, I'm not using his words, but illusion of lack. And that illusion of lack creates desire because you want something you think you don't have. And then when you go after that thing that you think you don't have, that is action and action is the karma. And the reaction to that action creates this karmic chain. And so everything that's showing up in your world and your life now is a reaction to action that you have taken essentially um, because of some illusion of lack, which isn't, and I don't want to say it's a badness either. I'm not, I'm not saying anything is good or bad, right or wrong. It's just what it is. Okay. Um, and so when we look at the tree of life in the tarot in this context, which again is, is we're going pretty deep here. When we look at the tarot in this context, we can see that the whole tarot deck going from the magician to the universe is an expression of that chain of events of pretending or becoming under the illusion that you lack something you go after it, you take an action, it creates karma and essentially your subjective universe, your tree of life. That is the creative process. And the magician is the trickster that starts the process, right? He's the magician, right? He's a, the original ma uh, magician was a stage magician in the Marseille and the decks before that. He's a trickster. So he is creating the illusion of this universe based on difference, based on lack, based on all this the, the, the beauty of, 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 of his illusions. And then it just keeps going and keeps going. Um, so what you can do is what I'm teaching in my Mysticism for Misfits course or what we're going to cover tomorrow and, and for the rest of the course is how we can pull ourselves. Now, this is not tarot divination. This is not tarot reading. This isn't even really self-development. This is like the next level. How can we pull ourselves from the shiny toys that exist in the tarot, all of the things that it expresses, which is life, and how can we situate ourselves in that calm, equal, perfect fullness slash emptiness, which is the fool, before there is the ignorance or the, or the ignorance that is introduced by the fool or the magician, before there is that ignorance of, oh my God, I don't have this, I need to go get it or I need to accomplish this, or any illusion that you're not absolutely fully complete, right? And the, and the fool expresses this in two ways. In, in one way, he is, he is the ignorance of his fullness and his completeness, and the universe expresses that completeness. But in another way, he is ignorant to any desire or any action. He is completely neutral. There's, a, there's several ways you can interpret this. But the fulcrum point is when the fool meets the magus, the magus brings the energy into Bina and Hokma, I mean, the whole tree of life is like this, but Bina and Hokma take the pure energy of Keter, which is pure oneness, it's number one. And it says, hey, um, let's make two. So let's make an otherness. Let's make a, an and if there's an otherness, there's something outside of you. And if there's something outside of you, there's a dance that can be had. And the dance can be good, totally, but I, I believe that when you pull away even from the dance, there's a, there's a bliss beyond description. And it, it doesn't involve, it, it includes the dance, but transcends the dance. It transcends the tree of life, it transcends the tarot, and it is essentially what the fool is kind of hinting at in a very subtle way. And also the, also the, the, the universe card. And what's cool is this works in both directions. So the... Uh, so Julie's asking, so pretty much is the only way not to have karma is to do nothing. Okay, big big question here. So it depends on who you ask. Um, and I, I don't want to speak to like traditional like Vedantins, but I, I would say a Vedantin would say that the karma already is here. Like you, we are already experiencing the fruits of our karma, of our past actions. So that's always going to be here in this life. But the idea is to pull away from, not necessarily pull away, but recognize that all of that karma, whatever we're experiencing, is being experienced within something much greater. And that thing is you, is consciousness, is this over pervasive, um, the best way I can say it is space. And the best way I want, I, I'm go going to attempt to explore this is even right now, when you watch your mind, every, where, does, where do all the thoughts show up in? 
Where do all the sensations show up? Where does even all, everything visually is showing up in something? So that's why we zoom out in meditation of the space, the space takes up. Yeah, yeah. So when we're zooming out in that, so this is everyone, this is a medi uh, meditation technique I'm teaching in my mysticism course, Mysticism for Misfits. In the, in the technique, we slowly zoom out of our relative experiences. And by relative experiences, I mean, I am a body sitting on a chair thinking about this YouTube live or thinking about this thing or that. And all of these experiences exist only in relationship to something else or, or show up within something else. And so when you continue to zoom out, you can even zoom out from your experience of yourself, right? So there's a, you can start, eventually you can start to see that there's like this self program thing running on its own, it's automatic. And you can almost observe that buzz of the self from outside the self, but like, I, the semantics break down at that point. But, but yeah, so um, Serena Vina says, you're describing every acid trip I've ever had, sometimes scary. Yeah, totally. So totally, yeah. Um, the cool thing about this is a lot of psychedelics, for, for everyone's different, for some people can give an experience that is close, that may be close to a mystical experience. Uh, and there is ego death involved at these higher levels, but you don't need any of like psychedelics at all for this. And my, my thing is, this is why grounding is really important. So you can always come back to yourself. My name is Joe, this is my body, here's my coffee. Like be, being able to create a solid anchor to throw back into what I would say relative reality, conventional reality, seeing this YouTube, whatever, like is really important. And, uh, and another thing is like, yeah, it can be scary. A lot of the stuff wasn't taught in like, you know, it's, this is, this is what makes it like esoteric or like, it's not, it, it can be dangerous sometimes. Um, so on all of that, does anyone have any other questions while we're here? Cause again, this, this stuff is very subtle and it's, uh, I think it's the coolest thing ever, but. Um, does anyone have any questions on that? Five for three, yes, I would love to experience it in a more controlled fashion. Yeah, Serena, so how do you, ex that's a, yeah, to experience it in a more controlled fashion is to use your own experiences. And the, the tool is you keep asking yourself, what is experiencing this? And then you might have an idea. Oh, I might say, okay, Joe is experiencing this. What's experiencing Joe? And then maybe I'll get a flash of a memory or a feeling in my body or, or a sensation that maybe I can't even describe. And then I'll say, okay, let's look at that. What's experiencing that? And just gently, very gently keep doing that. And if you do that, it'll get, I believe it will get more and more um, peaceful, uh, yeah, or at least it'll, it'll reveal more and more things. This is great. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Moonlight. Now in tarot, what this, the way that the tarot expresses this process. Okay. Let's bring it back to tarot before I start to wrap up. The tarot at its highest level expresses this process and it expresses a lot of things and there's a lot of interpretations and it can, it can, I mean, it can express whatever you want, but the path from the fool to the universe is an illustration of the path to enlightenment. And you can look at that as enlightenment going from the fool to the universe or the, the world card or the world card going to the fool. It works both ways. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so the, the fool might symbolize enlightenment, the universe might symbolize enlightenment, but uh, in every tarot card, you'll notice there is some polarity happening whether it's very like explicit, like the pillars in the high priestess card, or if it's more subtle, like the movement of strength closing or opening the, mount, the mouth of the lion. Um, there's always a resistance or a polarity, and that polarity is, has many layers to it. Uh, and it's, it's sort of fractal, like the polarity of justice is not the polarity of the high priestess, yet both of them are pillars and both of them have the same pattern. So the pattern of the justice card, for example, is 
the balancing act between society and personal um, and your own karma and your own actions and reactions. But the balancing act of the high priestess is much more primordial. It's much more existential. It's not action and reaction. It's more, you might compare it to subject and object. It, you, can, you might compare the high priestess, for example, to the last moment in the yoga sutras before you uh, are taught how to go beyond um, beyond subject and, subject and object, go into nirvikalpa samadhi, which is when the, your sense of self is destroyed from your sense of other than self, and you're in complete blankness. So, and the priestess does that because you know she she'll fuck you up. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start to wrap up in a little bit. Does anyone have any questions? From, so just to review, put your questions in the chat for right now. I'm going to review what we did today, uh, and, and, uh, and I'm going to plug again. So, so you have now a skill that you can use to read tarot without memorizing anything. And if you want more on tarot divination, apply to my July course. I'm already accepting applications there because uh, the last one filled up quickly and we're pretty full right now, but um, yeah. So I don't know how long that there will be spaces open for the July Tarot Divination course, but um, but you're, you're 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 guaranteed a spot if you're eligible and if you apply early. And I'm really excited for that. And then uh, I also taught you guys the um, advanced methods of incorporating correspondences for self development. And so if you know, and if that's your thing, if you want to go into Kabbalah, if you want to go into astrology and numerology, you're going to want to take my advanced tower course, which is freaking huge. And that even that course covers a little bit of some of the more philosophical stuff I was talking about afterwards. And then the third thing we, we went over today is the, the gag at the end, which is where we destroy all of it. And we recognize ourselves as the fool, as that, that complete um, consciousness naked brilliance of just space or however you want to describe it. Um, that which observes all of the experience, that silent witness that is experiencing all of the tarot cards, but is really none of them unless you might identify it as the fool like I do. Uh, and if that's your thing, uh, my course, Mysticism for Misfits, which I don't have it scheduled yet, but I'm probably going to do it again. So just let me know. Um, if I have enough people that want to do it, I will do it again. Um, but that's that one, like you have to really want to do it. Like that's a very high level of working with tarot and mystical philosophy. And um, I think the most important one, because I don't know, this this is the stuff that helped me get to where I am. And I, I literally, I, I'm so grateful for where I am and what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm at this place in my life where I'm like, I can honestly say I like really enjoy almost every single minute of my life. It's like, and, and this, these are the tools that brought me there. So I'm really excited to share them. So if it, if it aligns with you, hit me up. Uh, tarotmysticismacademy.com is where you can go to, um, to apply to those programs. And yeah, let me just check chat for any questions. Uh, I'm trying to uh, being perfectly imperfect. Also admit the pain and you'll find freedom. Oh, I love that. Be per be being perfectly imperfect, Austin. Very well said, Julie. And being perfectly imperfect in what we discussed today, the perfect imperfection is the perfection that is you, consciousness, which can't be anything. Compare consciousness to space. It's just space. It's all pervasive and it has contents. And the imperfection is the contents of your awareness. So whatever that preference or lack of preference or whatever shows up in your mind or your body, that we might say is the imperfection, but it exists within a perfectly balanced, absolute perfection. Um, Yvette says, are you the reincarnation of Hermes T? Hermes Triz, your eyes glow when you teach about this stuff. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I don't know, Hermes Triz, that he was pretty badass. Um, <laughs> Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Austin. No questions, but I'll have to rewatch because I missed a lot booking an appointment. Okay, cool. Yeah, re rewatch this. Even if you're watching from the recording, definitely rewatch, re especially the second and third thing I taught because there's a lot there. And uh, I'm going to cover all this stuff more more in depth, obviously, in, my, in the curriculum. But, um, but there's layers to this stuff, too. And this is material I continually come back to and continue continually get bigger insights on. I'm going to go smoke a CBD cigarette and contemplate the nature of my existence. Love you, Julie. Oh, I love you so much, Julie. Oh, you're, you're the best. Um, cool. 
reading star wisdom. Uh, so thank you everyone. Love you guys so much. Um, I will shoot you an email. I'll probably do another live in another week or so. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for attending and being awesome. And I look forward to seeing my, my mystical misfits tomorrow for mysticism for misfits. And I look forward to seeing my advanced tarot cohort on Wednesday and wherever else I see you guys. So much love. Thank you so much.